Good morning. morning. Praise the Lord. We welcome everybody into the sanctuary this morning. Amen. Amen. Good to be in the house of God. Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thank God for some people who are still glad to go into the house of God. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible is, is, is so unique. You imagine that thousands of years ago, Things were written concerning our day and our time, and yet we are the generation to live and actually see them come to pass. I was thinking on the other day, the Bible says, in in the last days, there'll be perilous times. You know, we, we have read scripture and read scripture thinking that it was a forward thing. It was down the road. Lo and behold, we find ourselves in that time. But I'm excited because the Bible also says, Look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody glad about their redemption getting closer? It's closer than it's ever been. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I, uh, I just thought I'd share that because I'm excited about, watch this, going home. I'm excited about going home. Hallelujah. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Amen. There's nothing to love here. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, God. Lord, we love you and we thank you this morning. God, we look unto you the author and the finisher of our faith, the one that's begun the good work in us who will also perform it, even unto the day of Christ. We thank you for the mercies and the grace that you've given us this day. Father, I pray for those who are tuning in via social media and who would see this at different times, as well as those of us who are present here today. I ask, Lord, that you would give us one, ears to hear, two, a heart to obey. God, your word has absolute preeminence in every aspect of our lives. May we walk according to it in Christ's name. Amen. And amen. I'm excited. I hope you are. I'm excited about Jesus. Can't, can't be excited about my bank account. Can't be excited. Can't be excited about my job. Can't be excited. See, all that stuff, it, it changes. Up and down. Up and down. But Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm coming out the gate swinging. I'm just ready. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Let me settle myself a little bit until we go into the word of God. Hallelujah. I know you got them for, well, is he going to preach? See, see, you're just, uh, I mean... You know, sometimes they go like, you know, if I, if I don't preach, is it all right? Because, I mean, haven't I preached enough all these other times? I mean, I think we still got a little something to go on. You know, the tank ain't completely empty. My goodness. Hallelujah. Glory. But I am going to preach. Hallelujah. Um, this morning, I want to speak to you on the topic, the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. And I feel like this may become part of a series. So you're going to probably hear this again. The mysteries of the kingdom. Now, it's very important. See, I I guess I feel like this. I feel like, you know, what else is there to learn about living here? I mean, y'all don't master this. You, you this, this. You know, gravity works. Okay, we know that. I mean, you, you know, God, there's, but what do we know about the kingdom? What do we know about where we're spending all eternity? What do we know about the kingdom coming here? The Bible says, and I want you to get this today. I want you to go with me. I want you to really tune in. Don't make it a sermon. Don't make it just some, make it something that you can say, you know what? I'm going to learn this. Amen. I'm going to digest it and make it part of my being. 
how I live, what I do, how I think. I want to be kingdom minded. So let's talk about the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. It says, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. So it's given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Before I move on, but Donald is given to us to know the mysteries. You can know it. It's given to you to know it. But do you want to know it? Now, the word mystery in the New Testament is not the word mysterious that we use in the English. Mysterious is spooky and deep kind of stuff. That's what we look at a lot of times when we talk about spiritual things in church. We think of mysterious stuff. Ooh, ooh, spooky indeed. That is not the word mystery in the New Testament. The word mystery in the New Testament has the connotation, if you will, it's being outside of the range of unassisted natural apprehension. In other words, it's beyond natural access. You can't get this, watch this, Because somebody taught you. You don't get this because you've got a certain amount of of CE credits. Let let me do it in the church realm. You don't get this because you've been in church for a while. Understanding the mysteries of the kingdom does not come by natural apprehension. You're not getting this because you've been around for a while. So to simply say, well, I've been in church all my life. You you know, for some people, you shouldn't even say that because that's an embarrassment. To say you've been in the church all your life and you act like that. (laughs) A certain way you ought to be acting since you've been in the church all your life. So we're talking about the mysteries of the kingdom. I'm going to show you something here shortly. If the Holy Spirit allows us to go this, this route. It says now it's outside of the range of unassisted natural apprehension. You don't get it naturally. It can be made known only by one. Watch this. I'm going to give you these three points. That's what we're going to talk about today. It can be made only known by one divine revelation. You can only get the mysteries of the kingdom by one divine revelation. And we're going to show you scriptural points on each of these. Two, not just divine uh, Revelation, but it's in a manner and a time that's appointed by God. You can't just bust into the kingdom and decide you want to know this right now because I deserve to know. No, God, it's a manner and a time that's appointed by God. I'll show you this real, 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 real quickly. How many of you all enjoy your salvation? I'm going to listen to this question. How many of you all wish you'd have got saved sooner? Listen to this. Why didn't you? Because it wasn't up to you. It was in a manner and a time appointed by God. You didn't get saved when you wanted to. This wasn't you going like, I think I get saved today. Got nothing else to do. I think salvation is a nice thing. No, 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 no. It was in a manner and a time appointed by God. I'll show it to you in scripture. But we tend to think that, why why don't they get saved? No, no, God God is working things. Think about what he did with you. It wasn't that we hadn't heard the gospel before. Some of us grew up hearing church or hearing the gospel, but we just didn't respond to it. Why? Because it wasn't the manner and time that God had appointed for you. Don't get saved when you want to. 
So, okay, we're talking about understanding the mysteries of the kingdom. And what did we say? Number one, divine revelation. Number two, it's a manner or a time appointed by God. This is a God appointment. And you ain't late for it. Thirdly, the illumination of the Holy Spirit. It's the illumination of the Holy Spirit. When you start talking about the kingdom, like I said, head knowledge ain't going to get it. It's the illuminate. See, okay, watch this. Oh, y'all getting me excited already. It's just the word, though. It's just the word. Mother, you know how you, you, you by yourself, mother, in your room, reading, and something explodes off that page. It's the illumination of the Holy Spirit. He literally cut the light on for you. It's always been there, but he cut the light on so you could see it. It's the illumination of the Holy Spirit. See, when we're talking about kingdom, we're going to have to have God's spirit. You have to. Well, let, let, let's, let's get into the book. So, three things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about one, divine revelation. It's what we need to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Number two, the time that's appointed and the manner that's done by God himself. There's a manner and a time that's appointed by God. What do you mean when you say the manner? It's the way God does it. All of us are saved because Jesus Christ shed his blood for the remission of our sins. But all of us didn't get saved the same way. I, I, I mean, you know, so, so some of y'all might have been watching the 700 Club. I don't know. Everybody wasn't in church. So, you know, some of us, we can't. Listen, the truth be told, we came back from the club that night. <laughs> couldn't sleep. Cut on the TV. I, I mean, see, it would be amazing to hear our stories because this was the manner that God led us to salvation. I mean, some of us was living real high. All of a sudden, something came in our lives and it brought us down where we saw that we needed God to help us. Only he could come through. We had done all that other stuff. We had networked. We had connected with the right folk. We thought we had done all of that. But you came to you, to, to, like, like somebody said, we came to ourselves. And you realize that ourselves wasn't enough. See, we, we, there's a point where the manner that God used could be different for all of us, but it led us to the same goal of salvation through Jesus Christ. I don't know how God did it, did it for you. I remember individuals who witnessed to me time and time again on the college campus. They, they, I said, no, salvation can't be that easy. You mean I, I got to just, just believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins? No, it can't be that easy. And just accept him and not try to figure this out. I said, no, I can't be that. I, I, I mean, I got to be able to do something. I got to be able to do something that look like I'm worthy. Yeah, all of that thinking. So I kept hearing the gospel, but it wasn't the manner and the time that God had appointed. And then there was an invitation from some young ladies to come to church. Been to church before, plumber. I don't set up in churches all across the United States. Might as well go to this one too. Don't even remember the sermon. But I remember the altar call. When the Lord spoke to my heart and let me know that this was the time. It was the manner and the time appointed by God. Don't get saved when we want to. Let, let's, let's get into this. Let's get into this. I'm excited already. Let's talk about divine revelations. Go with me to Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. King James. Divine re uh, revelation. We, let's see how does this work. Because sometimes we're going like, man, that's revelation. Well, sometimes it could be illumination. But I want to talk about divine revelation. I want to show you the difference here. Okay. The, 
Bible says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? So Jesus is saying to his disciples, he is saying to the individuals who walk with him day in and day out, he is saying to the people who quote unquote know him. He is saying to them, what is the assessment of ordinary people concerning me? What does the ordinary person outside of our group say about me? <laughs> I can see this is going to be good now. <laughs> Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? What did Jesus didn't know who he was? I just want to know, you know, I'm getting ready to finish this thing. I want to hear what people are saying now. Getting ready to wrap it up. Wanting to see if they're getting it or not. So he says, whom do men say that I am? First off, let me, let me preface what I'm about to say by saying this. Unsaved people do not know who Jesus is. This is, this is the proverbial grenade that needs to be thrown in the room for a moment. <laughs> um, people, you know, you ever, I know who God is. Or I believe in God. Do you know the Bible says the devils believe and tremble? So believe, believing in God is not enough. Notice what I said. Unsaved people do not know who Jesus is. That's why it's really an introduction for unsaved people when it comes to, to, to meeting Jesus. Because they didn't know. In other words, just like you, if I brought you somewhere and I said, oh, this is a person you don't know, so I have to introduce you to him. Unsaved people don't know who Jesus is. We talk to them sometimes like they know. They do not know. Okay, I'm going to stay in the text, but I'm going to show you in the text. Verse 14. And they said, so here's the disciples' response to Jesus about what people are saying. You know, it's amazing. Church people always know what other folks are saying. Always, oh, yeah, what, what they're saying out there. Well, such as a, they always know now. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say Elias and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. So the best answer that all of the unsaved people could give was that Jesus was a prophet. The world is still saying these same statements about Jesus today. Oh, I love his teachings. I mean, come on, y'all have heard this religious folks who say his teachings are so wonderful. When I start hearing that, I'm already going like, you ain't following him. Because if you're just talking about his teachings as though he was some scholarly individual, you're just missing it completely. So the best assessment the disciples have brought back the highest degree of answer that they have heard everybody out there around them saying about who Jesus is, he's a prophet. He's a prophet. As though that's honorable when you're talking about Jesus. Not that being a prophet is not honorable, but we're talking about Jesus. Y'all with me today? See, people don't need a prophet, they need a savior. Listen to this. What you see is what you get. I'm going to give you a moment. What you see in Jesus is what you get from Jesus. If you only see him being a prophet, you're not going to get salvation. So if you come back here prophet, no, you ain't going to make it. Kingdom won't be yours. You got to see Savior. You got to see Lord. You got to see Son of the living God. Verse 15. So now Jesus is going to flip the script. I know y'all been listening to what's being said out there. So 
he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? So what are you saying? I mean, after all, you don't walk with me. You don't see the miracles. You don't see the healings that have occurred. You've been around me when I've raised the dead. Blind eyes have been opened. Deaf ears have been unstopped. Who do you say that I am? Can I just for a moment pause you? Miracles and healings are not how you will know who Jesus is. I, I, I know that's a strange thing to say in church. Because we think the demonstration of power is always what relates to God. But it's not. There are other powers at work. So if you're just assuming because somebody is demonstrating some level of power that that must be God, I beg to differ. Oh, bless the little baby. <laughs> I don't want us to be misled into thinking that just because someone's demonstrating some level of power, oh, that was a miracle. That's God. See, signs and wonders follow believers. We don't follow signs and wonders. Let's go. So verse 16. And Simon Peter answers. Now somebody got to say something. Jesus don't lay the question out there. Who do you say I am? Why is everybody so quiet? Y'all was quick to tell me what everybody else was saying. Now I ask you what you think. Everybody's silent. But there's a man in the midst of them who's not afraid to open his mouth. Some people have accused Peter of having foot and mouth disease. He's always putting his foot in his mouth. But on this particular occasion, the Bible says, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. So this is Peter's answer. He didn't say it. Well, I, I, I think the connotation, Elder, uh, 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 Minister Plummer, the connotation is he rose up and this is what he said. All the rest of you jokers being quiet. Let me tell you what I think. Nobody else want to say nothing. Couldn't wait till it was time to tell what everybody else was saying out there. Let me tell you what I think. So Peter rises up and he said, well, this is what's going on. He said, listen, I want you to know, thou art the Christ. I ain't wondering about this thing. You are the son of the living God. So now wait, 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 wait. So the recognition that Jesus is the son of the living God is what's required. I want you to see what I'm saying here. This is really important. Not just seeing Jesus as a prophet. He is the son of the living God. He is the Christ, the anointed one, the Christos. You have to know who he is. This ain't, this ain't one of them things that is multiple choice. No, 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 no. I'm not making it in like that. And this ain't knowing up here. Oh, well, but let me, let me, let, verse 17. And Jesus answered, now, now Peter don't say it something. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my father which is in heaven. So it wasn't by flesh and blood, so it must have been divine revelation. Oh, I'm preaching better than you saying amen. Walked you right into that one, didn't it? Right into it. Notice the divine revelation. He didn't get it by flesh and blood. This wasn't because you studied. It wasn't because you went to seminary. This is because God, the Father, gave you a divine revelation. Now watch. Here's the thing. You're talking about divine revelation? Divine revelation changes you. No, no, no. You didn't just get. See, this ain't just goosebumps. Let, let, let me help you. You got a divine revelation of who Jesus is. That's how you got saved. Yes. Notice the change. Yes. It wasn't that you just got goosebumps. And woo, she had a couple of tears and you went back the same way you were. No, 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 no. Divine revelation changes you. 
So Peter didn't get this in seminary. Right. It was revealed to him by his heavenly father. It was a divine revelation. Yes. You don't learn Jesus by instruction. Amen. It's by divine revelation that you know who Jesus is. Yes. Number two. Talking about mysteries of the kingdom. See, what, what we're doing, let, let me fast forward. What we're doing is learning how we understand the mysteries. Because once we learn how we understand the mysteries, then we're going to get into the mysteries. Oh, I'm just letting you know where we're going. See, some things are going to come by divine revelation. God's going to see some of you, if you look back over your life, you've had divine revelations, not just in salvation. There's some things that you heard about God, but it exploded and it became part of your fiber. I'll give you a for instance. The Lord spoke to me years ago. I lost my job. I lost my job and I lost everything I had. Wasn't my fault. It was something that happened. My wife will tell you the story. If y'all want to know the story, she'll tell you the whole thing. Lost everything. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm Jehovah Jireh. He said, I'm your provider. I went 13 months, paid my rent on time. Matter of fact, paid it in advance. I couldn't get a job nowhere. Nobody would hire me with all of, the, with, with all of my little resume or whatever. I couldn't get a job nowhere. You know why, Minister Plumber? Because he said, I'm your provider. And he showed me that I'm your provider. It was a divine revelation that changed me. So I'm not worrying about my provision because leading up to my wife and I getting married, I said, Lord, I want to be a provider. So he showed me that he was my provider. See, divine revelation will change you. It's something that becomes a part of you. It's, it's not just, oh, yeah, that was a good word. No, 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 no. You just got inspired. Sometimes I think some, sometimes inspiration could be just like perspiration. You can wipe, wipe it off. Some folks are real good at getting inspired. So number two, a manner and time appointed by God, understanding the mysteries of the kingdom. Not only is divine revelation necessary. But sometimes it's a manner and time that's appointed by God. Bible says in Luke chapter two, verse four, I want to show you something. Now, this, this is what's interesting. I, I told you, that look, look, look at our salvation, how it happened. It was a manner and a time that was appointed by God. We didn't set it up. If the truth be told, we were clueless. We were stumbling through sin just like we were doing any other day. Not knowing it was all a setup to bring you to an appointed place. At a point in time, in God's own manner. Luke chapter 2, verse 4. The Bible says, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David. If you're familiar with this story, uh, you know that this is dealing with Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary are espoused. Um... Some people say that's engaged, but it's really a whole lot heavier than that. Uh, so, and, 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 and Mary is like pregnant. Uh -huh. No, no, Mary like really pregnant. Sisters that's been pregnant, she like really, 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 really pregnant. And you know what it's like to be really, really, you know how that uncomfortable pregnant? <laughs> yeah, I, I, see, I, I need y'all to help me preach this. The, the, the latter stages of the pregnancy. The, 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 you know, not, not, not just move. You can't breathe. Huh? Move over. I mean, you know, you all on my lung, my kidney, everything. You know, you know I've seen my wife. Felt so bad for her. Well, nothing I can do. I'm going to sleep good today. <laughs> I'm just... Well, hey, what nothing I can do? Come on, Justin, what nothing we can do? <laughs> Luke 
Luke chapter 2, verse 4. So we got a very pregnant Mary. The Bible says Joseph also went up from Galilee. So now he's leaving out of the city of Nazareth. How would you like to have to move in your latest stages of pregnancy? I mean, you got to pack up all your stuff. I, I, I mean, you got to get everything. I, I, I mean, come on, Angela, you got to get all your stuff together. Time to move. Now, you know, y'all, y'all, you, you know, some, some of that. Um... <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me be nice. You know, ladies, your, your, your personality is a little different sometimes in you, those latter stages of pregnancy. May not always be as nice as you were prior to the pregnancy. And you got to move? Now, wait a minute. Aisha, you ain't driving that Suburban, you riding a donkey. No, 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 no. We got to pack up the donkey. We got to get all our gear together on the donkey. Don't you know? Joseph? I, I mean, you, you know, I, let me stay with it. I ain't going to go off on a tangent. <laughs> so verse 5, the Bible says, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife. The Bible says being great with child. I told you she was seriously there. She, I mean, she's probably dilated already. I mean, we just, we just didn't know that. You know, they didn't stop to say that. But the Bible says she was great with child. That's letting you know she's in the latter stages. Something about to happen here soon. And you got to move from Nazareth on your donkey. Verse 6. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Now, the manner that God may use can sometimes look uneventful. Because let's get the context of the story. They have to move because of a census. You got to go back to where you originated from so you could be counted. That's uneventful. I mean, it's like when they take the census here every 10 years or what? Oh, we're doing the census. Okay. Nobody think, do you realize that God allowed a whole city, a whole nation to be mobilized so he could get one person in the manner and the time that he had appointed? So what is God moving for you? Look uneventful. You know, I'm sure people will complain, man, we, we got to do this census again. Every time I turn around, it seems like we're doing a census. They ain't got a clue of what's really happening. Let, let, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. I, I know, because you could look at this and go like, well, it don't really say God was doing anything. Until you look at Micah chapter 5, verse 2. And you realize God was doing everything. But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old and from everlasting. So God used a national census to move a pregnant woman to her place of destiny. Because he had already prophesied Bethlehem is where the child's going to be born. So we need a census to get you where you got to be. It was God's manner and appointed time. See, we have to understand, when it comes to understanding the mysteries of the kingdom, God has a manner and an appointed time. We ain't always ready for what God wants to do. Verse 7, back to Luke chapter 2. The Bible says, and she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. One that they didn't want to go to the end, wasn't no room there. People act like Jesus just wanted to be, you know, we're going to, hey, well, let's go find the nearest manger. No, that wasn't the case. Wasn't no room in the end. Got to give birth somewhere. 
Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So the king of kings is born in a manger. Because it ain't no room in the end. God himself orchestrated the manor in a manger at his appointed time. Galatians 4 and 4 says, but when the fullness of time was come, God's appointed time, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Do you know this? Jesus did not come one minute before his time, nor did he stay any longer than he was supposed to. See, there's an appointed time. God is behind all of it. There's an appointed time for you. It's an appointed time for me. The Bible says in Hebrews 9 and 27, it's appointed unto every man wants to die, then the judgment. So there's a manner and time appointed by God when you're talking about uh, understanding the mysteries of the kingdom. People, th think all of the people that was traveling with Mary, they didn't have a clue. They saw Mary, didn't know she was carrying the son of God. Hey, Mary. You going to the census too, huh? See, some things look uneventful, but it's God's manner and timing that's been appointed. Thirdly, I want to talk about being illuminated by the Holy Spirit. Because as we get these, as we understand divine revelation as one of the ways to understand the mysteries, as we come to the place where we know that God has an appointed time and an appointed manner that he does that. God does it his way, his time. Teach us about the mysteries of the kingdom. But then there's the illumination of the Holy Spirit. I want you to see this. Mm. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, New Living Translation. I'm excited already. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, New Living Translation. Now, now watch this. Ooh, this is so good. <laughs> no one can know a person's thoughts. I just want to stop right there. Do you know can't nobody read your mind? I don't care how much sci-fi stuff they got out there. I don't care what they say. Can nobody read your mind? Amen. Yes. I just thought that was good. You know. Yes. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. I know y'all looking at Minority Report and Tom Cruise and talking about, the, you know, they're going to arrest people before they make the crime. Now all y'all going to want to go home and try to see Minority Report. See that? <laughs> But nobody knows your thoughts. Nobody can read your mind except your own spirit. Except your own spirit. Every thought you have is not yours. The enemy wants you to have thoughts and embrace them as your own, but they're not yours. You're like, uh, you know, step out in front of that traffic. That ain't your thought. Let, let, me, let me help you. I, and I, 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 some people may have a problem with this, but that's, that's fine. You just have a problem with it. Suicide is not initiated by the person. It may be carried out by the person, but it's not initiated by the person. The Bible says Satan was a murderer from the beginning. So if he could get you to help him murder you, he's still doing what he is from the very beginning. Yes, to them, it may sound like it was their thought, but it really wasn't. It was not initiated by them. It may have been carried out by them, but it wasn't initiated by them. No more than when, you know, you had the... You're in a situation, you're on your job, you say slap him. Okay, that ain't your thought. But now you can carry it out. 
and embrace it as your own if you want to. But see, what people don't understand is when you embrace the thought, it's your consequences. You can't do that. They, 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 I know most of y'all don't even know who this is when I say this, but Flip Whistle used to say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> I know y'all don't even know who that is. Come on, mother. They don't even know who that is. He used to say, the devil made me do it. Every time he do something wrong or do something bad, the devil made me do it. But see... It's not him making you do it. It's that he gives you the suggestion or the thought and you embrace it and act on it. It wasn't your thought. All right, all right. Because you know why? Because nobody can know a person's thoughts except that person's spirit. Now, okay, let me get y'all here. Let me get, get this back. Reel everybody back in. Come on. So no one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. Wait a minute. Slow down. No one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. No one can know God's thoughts except God's spirit. Now watch this. I'm going to read something to you. And watch the Holy Spirit. Boom. Light come on. Watch. I'm telling you. Go with me to Isaiah 55, mm -hmm. and you've read this time and time again. Holy Spirit, thank you for cutting the light on. Yes. Isaiah 55 and 8. King James. I want to do King James, Jack. I want to do the traditional one. Everybody don't read. Because you hear folks quoting this everywhere. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. And this is God talking. Everybody say that. Well, you know, the Lord's thoughts are not our thoughts. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So this is God talking, right? Yes. Verse 9. Watch the Holy Spirit cut the light on. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Right. God's ways are not our ways. God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Unless you have his spirit. That's what he was saying. See, everybody start reading that there, but they stop in the Old Testament. Because you didn't have his spirit then. Now you have his spirit. Okay, let's go back to 2 Corinthians. Let's cut the light on. Let's just go back. Second Corinthians, uh, what was it? First Corinthians chapter two. Oh yeah, y'all y'all got this thing now. First Corinthians two and eleven, New Living Translation. Oh yeah, y'all y'all running now. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. So now, wait a minute. Except God's own spirit. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look at verse twelve. Come on now. So now you can know his thoughts. Now you can know his ways. Because you got his spirit. He was saying that to them because they didn't have his spirit. But he says, but we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. So there is the spirit of the world. And see, that's what you have to be careful for. Some people have the spirit of the world, not the spirit of God. And it'll manifest, so that don't, don't worry about that. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. So, since we have, that's what he's saying. So, or since we have, we can know the wonderful things God has freely given. We can. We're not operating in the dark. We're not guessing, hoping, wondering. Maybe, maybe not. We can know because we got his spirit. Lights on. 
So we can know what, look at this. The wonderful things God has freely given us don't cost you nothing. No admission. No cost. Freely. Let, let me build on this a little bit. Romans chapter 8, verse 9, just a little bit. So the, the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So I want you to really know this because people have hammered us over the head with this thing that we can't know God's thoughts. We can't know his ways. You know, they, they see, here's what the scriptures say right here. Isaiah 55 and 8 and 9. See that? You can't know it. But they stop. Now we got his spirit. We can know mysteries now. We can understand stuff that other folk couldn't understand. They didn't have his spirit. So let me, let me do this right quick. Romans 8 and 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you are in Christ, you got his spirit. I know one more. How about this one? Galatians 4 and 6. Real, 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 real quick. Galatians 4 and 6. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. The real reason you say, Father, is because the spirit, Abba, the spirit that's in you is saying, Abba, Father. In other words, I have a relationship that's covenant with my dad, my spiritual father. It's because the relationship is spiritual. You got his spirit. It's some things that your children know about you that other folk don't know about you. Because they got relationship. All right, let's go back. First Corinthians chapter two, verse uh, 13. Now. I'm trying to wrap up. I told you I was already excited before we got here. So. So. New Living Translation jacket, please. Now, I, I want to show you something. Look what Paul is saying. When we tell you these things, we don't use words that come from human wisdom. When we're talking about the mysteries of the kingdom, this ain't about human wisdom. This ain't because you went to Harvard, Yale, or, or you know, one of those Ivy Leagues, and, and thank God for them. Nothing wrong with that. But MIT ain't going to get it here. When we tell you these things, we do not use the words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the spirit, using the spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. Using the spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. Now, this is not saying that the Holy Spirit giving us new words. New words is not in the language. That ain't what that's saying. It's saying that now when he teaches us things or shows us things, he uses words so now we understand the spirit, the spiritual truths behind it. Let, let me show you here. Let me show you. See, these are spiritual truths that are illuminated by the Holy Spirit. This is what happens when you, like, when I talked about mother before, you in your own room and all this. You, it's the same words you've always read, but they leaped off the page now. Because now the Holy Spirit is illuminating the spiritual truth. Why? Because you have God's spirit. Haven't you ever, I, I mean, haven't you ever looked at a scripture that you've been, you don't read all, you know, you, you always been reading it. And one day it looked like that thing just, who wrote this? This is brand new and you just see it in a whole new way. Like when did they put that in there? Because now the Holy Spirit is illuminating the spiritual truth behind it. He's doing that. Oh. Verse 14. Now, this is something that we have to be reminded of in the church. We have to be reminded of this. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. Because sometimes we're trying to explain stuff to people that can't get it. You know, can you imagine, and I did, for lack of a better analogy, this is the best I got. 
off the cuff, the best I got. How do you explain division to a child that don't know how to do basic uh, 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 addition? I mean, let's do algebra now. I ain't even got addition. So how are we trying to give people who don't know Jesus, that don't have God's spirit, how are we trying to tell them spiritual truths? Okay, well, just another proverbial grenade for y'all. Here you go. God is married to the backslider. It's a spiritual truth. How can, how can God get married? Okay, you, you want another one? You want... You, you want you want one to, to, to rock the church? The church is not the bride of Christ. It is nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere. But you will hear people all across the land tell you that. Find it and I'll pay you a thousand dollars. But if you don't, bring me my thousand. I'm going to be rich, kid. Because it ain't in the book. He tells us what the bride of Christ is. Listen, look at this. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to just, just walk with me just for a second. I'm going to show you how much this doesn't make sense. The church is the what? Body of Christ. Christ is the what? Head of the church. So how's the head going to marry the body? Oh, boy, oh, my goodness. I told you, you got to wipe that perspiration off, boy. <laughs> Come on. But people tell you this all of the time. What's the problem? Not getting in the book. The book will tell you who the bride is. But it freaks people out because it's a spiritual principle. It's a kingdom principle. And people have a hard time wrapping their heads around what he is saying. Because when you look, New Jerusalem is the bride. Read the book. I think it's Revelation chapter 20. He told John completely, here you go. Come and I will show you the bride. But people are rock, walking around here saying the church is the bride of Christ. How we get invited to the Lamb's marriage supper and <laughs> what, what, what bride is invited to her wedding? That don't even make sense. Okay. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it for only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. You got to be spiritual. First Corinthians 2 and 7 and we're going to get ready to close. First Corinthians 2 and 7. I think this is King James I want to do now. First Corinthians 2 and 7. King James Version. Bible says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Now, this is us now. This is where we should be. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now, oh, my goodness. So let me do this quickly. God's wisdom is spoken in a mystery concerning divine. I mean, let me do this right. God's wisdom is spoken in a mystery requiring divine revelation, okay? A specific manner and time appointed by God, because he's the one making the appointment, not us, and the illumination of the Holy Spirit. So God's wisdom is spoken in a mystery that requires divine revelation, a specific manner and time that's appointed by God and the illumination of the Holy Spirit. You're not getting this naturally. So verse 8, since I laid all of that out, that's only the, all I did was those are the three points that we've been covering. 
But look at verse 8. Which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Even Satan and his cohorts do not know the mysteries of God, God's wisdom. Let me share that again. Because there's some people, even in the church, that think the devil know everything. Even Satan and his cohorts do not know the mystery of God's wisdom. So you can know something the devil doesn't know. How do you think you end up being victorious all the time over the traps and the strategies that the enemy is trying to employ against you? Because God gives you his wisdom. All right, let's, Lord, if I just jump up and down a little bit or something. Verse nine, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Most people stop right there. They say, ain't no, ain't, ain't no eye seen it, ain't no ear heard it. It ain't even, folk can't even imagine what God's prepared. And they stop right there. And some people, that's where they want to stay. I want to go all the way. Ty Trebet said, I want it all back. I want everything. I want it all. Look at verse 10. But, which precedes everything else. There's something more important than what you just read. But God hath in the past already did it. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. All you need is his spirit. You want to know what God has prepared for you? You want to know what no eye has seen? You want to know what no ear has heard? You want to know what nobody's imagined? Just get his spirit. You want to know what God's prepared for you? Wait till we start talking about in the kingdom. I mean, what's the kingdom of heaven like? Wait till we really start talking about what some of y'all is truly just mind blown. But it ought to be like that. Because we're going through life down here as though there's nowhere else we're going. The things that are coming on the land that are going to transpire. If you don't have a hope outside of here. You, there's got to be more than this. This the best? This is it, God? Really? This ain't even eating. <laughs> Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. Yes. What does the place look like that he's prepared for you? Well, I don't know. I'm going to get the glory. Why can't you find out now? When you make a reservation for a hotel, don't they show you the pictures? Yeah. I want to know where I'm going. What's on, the, what's on the side of that? They got lights in the parking lot or what? You know, I want to know. Jesus didn't leave us without these things, you all. But you got to be ready. You got to have a spirit. Because when you start talking about some of this stuff and you start seeing what it really looked like, you know, one of the things I looked at is you, to see some of the stuff that you're going to see in the spirit. This is what I looked at. Do you notice everywhere? I can't I can't think of anywhere that I've ever seen. When someone sees something in the spirit, I mean, something, well, sometimes angels or whatever, when you really see stuff. Let me do it like this. People get scared of stuff that they think is demonic. Have you seen what God can do? I mean, have you really seen what God can do? I mean, it's just, I think some of the people, when you look at Daniel, they, 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 these, these fellas was passing out. They were straight up gone. Because God, was, he's going to blow our mind, y'all. I mean, see, I, I, was as a, I was as a dead man. And all he did was see something. Haven't you, 
I know we, I, I know I'm just, just kind of just touch around the, the fringes of a couple mysteries. Haven't you ever wondered why we can't go with these bodies? I mean, because here's what I'm saying. Okay, remember Adam and Eve was created to live forever. So much so that after they sinned, they had to be forced or they had to be removed from the garden and then an angel to keep them from going back to get to the tree of life because if they ate of the tree of life, they would continue to live. So they had the capability of living forever. So why can't we go in these bodies? Stay tuned for the mysteries of the kingdom. (laughs) See that? (laughs) Got to stay tuned. Got to come back. You got to come back. You got to come back. (laughs) Verse 10. Let me wrap up. Verse 10. Verse 10. Let me wrap up. Verse 10 says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Past tense. Y'all, we can know this. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So Satan doesn't know the mysteries of God's wisdom, but God has revealed it to those of us that love him. The deep things of God. God's prepared some deep deep things for you. Because you love him. So what's the deep stuff that God has for you? I mean, I ain't talking about your mama's love. I ain't talking about your daddy's love. I know you might be a daddy's girl or whatever. I understand. I get it. I get it. But what about the deep stuff that God has for you? Fear not, little flock, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Why do you say fear not? Because I believe it's some stuff that'll blow our mind. It's deep. And it's the mysteries of the kingdom that he wants to show us. This life, this, this is not all. I don't care what you drive, I don't care where you live. That don't compare. That does not compare. How does, how does he say, in my father's house there are many mansions? Wait a minute. His house got mansions. Let's just stop. His house has mansions. Well, you know, that doesn't really mean it's an allegory for some. See, because you, uh, you're just not spiritual and you can't get it. Because it's on another plane that you can't understand. So if I tell you that the kingdom of heaven has no sun and no moon, so where's the gravity? Stay tuned for the mysteries of the kingdom. See, But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. They are illuminated by the Holy Spirit. There's stuff that God wants to show us, you all, that he wants to teach us. And it's the mysteries of his kingdom. But we can't keep walking around here acting as though this is just the routine, everyday kind of life. It's not. We should be operating in kingdom authority every moment of our lives. When you get ready to lay down, do you take authority over your dreams? Why? They're yours. When you get ready to go in during the course of your day, what do you say over your day? How do you start it? It's your day. See, what are we... All we have to do is line our words up with the will of the king. And then we release kingdom authority into the earth. Or are you lining your words up with another authority and releasing their authority in the earth? See, you don't have one of the things and I'm, 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 I'm finishing up. One of the things that's very intriguing to me. And I'm learning more. I feel like the Holy Spirit is teaching me this about, I look at Daniel, I look at Jeremiah, um, and even Jesus. They ministered under oppressive societies. In other words, their government was not in charge. I think of Joseph. We're running around here acting as though 
we need some political savior. That if they pass the right laws, we could do the right things then. We're waiting on somebody to fix it. I believe we just need to operate in kingdom authority. I believe the impact that God wants us to make in this time, in this season, all we got to do is just operate in kingdom authority. Because we can understand the mysteries and then release them in the earth. Y'all ain't nobody else going to do this. You know why? Because everybody else, if you're not spiritual, you're not going to see it. And I'm not just talking about redeeming love, I'm talking about the body of Christ. We're the ones that God has his, as his operating agents in the earth. Stop waiting on somebody else to do something. You're the somebody else. Stop waiting on somebody else to say something. You say something. Well, Lord, I don't know. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. The Holy Spirit will lead you. He will illuminate you. You will operate in the manner and the time that God has appointed you. And you will have divine revelation. Why? Because you have his spirit. Every head bow, eyes are closed. Father, I pray that your word today will have free course and be glorified. God, every heart, every mind that needed to be touched, and God, every renewal that you wanted to transpire today, I pray, Lord, that it be done so for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice, whether it be in the respective social media platforms or here presently that doesn't know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, that if they have not taken the opportunity to recognize that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would convict them of the truth and the reality of who Jesus is. They cannot be saved outside of you. They cannot be saved, Lord, without knowing who Jesus really is. He is not just a prophet. He is not just a good teacher. He is the son of the living God. He is the Christ. He is the one who died for our sins, who was buried and rose again on the third day and who's seated on the right hand of the father and who's coming back again. This same Jesus is the one that we're talking about now. Holy Spirit, please. Someone must know who Jesus is and they can't know without you. You bear witness to all the truth. If there's someone here today and you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, why every head is bowed and eyes are closed. I'm not here to put pressure on you. I'm here to provide an opportunity for you to meet Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. His arms are open to accept you right now. He simply wants you to know that he gave his life for you. That he lived a sinless life. He died as a substitute for you and I. So that we don't have to die and spend all eternity in hell. This is the Jesus I'm talking about. The one who rose from the dead. Who wants you to accept his sacrifice right now. I believe the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with the truth right now. If you're here and you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you want to be saved, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. I want you to just lift that hand up while every eye is closed and uh, heads are bowed. Just lift that hand up. That's me. I want to be saved. I don't want to be lost. I want to accept Jesus right now. Maybe you're here and you say, listen, I need to rededicate my life. I've strayed off. I've begun to walk away. I've gotten involved in other things and I've lost my focus concerning the kingdom. Listen, Jesus loves you. You can't out the grace of our God. I don't care how beaten down you may feel, how bad you may feel about what you've done, what you've said, and who you've done and said it with. I want you to know Jesus is not shocked by what we've done. When he gave his life, he said, it is finished because he covered every situation and every circumstance that we'd ever have. He's the high priest that's been touched with the infirmities like as we are yet without sin. He knows what it's like to be in all of these positions that we find ourselves in. He knows what it's like to be tempted to do all of these things, but he went through it sinless. So you and I can have a chance, a chance to walk with him. Just want to say thank you for joining us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. God bless you.